This is the Trek chair from Ghetto Gear, a unique chair for hiking and camping with because it uses trekking poles. If you're interested in hearing more about this chair, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Ghetto Gear for sending me the Trek chair so that I could share it with you. Yeah, this is unique. You know, I have not seen another chair like this on the market, something that utilizes trekking poles that you may already be carrying with you to form the structure and frame of the chair. And the obvious re uh, benefits are the weight savings. So you're already carrying the poles, why not make them part of the chair? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go down to my seating area here. I'm gonna take the chair apart so I can put it back in its bag, talk about the components of the chair, put it together, and then we'll go from there. All right, I, I need to mention this before I get started. Uh, deer flies. Yeah, my arch enemy, the deer flies are all around me today and I did not bring my dragonfly wingman. That uh, is the only thing I know of that will keep them at bay. So if you see me slapping at myself, you'll understand why. Okay, as I mentioned, unique chair in the fact that it actually uses a pair of hiking poles as part of its structure, giving you the ability to have hiking poles that you can hike with but not have to carry the added weight of extra poles as part of your chair, making the chair even lighter again. So two separate items, this with dual use, actually triple use as you'll hear in a few moments time, and the chair itself. So we are actually, it's kind of like a dual review at the same time because you can in fact purchase the chair by itself and use your hiking poles, not recommend it. I'll explain why in a few minutes, but you can did it. I have an extra set of hiking poles that I assembled the chair with and it will work. But if you don't already have a set of hiking poles, you're gonna to want to take a look at these ones because this as a separate review built into one is, well, these are really good poles. Let's put it that way, at a great price for the quality. So let's get started. I'll put the poles down and uh, we'll come back to those in a minute. So here's the chair. And again, what makes this lighter than average is the fact that some of the poles that are used to assemble it aren't there. They're, they're the hiking poles and that's what you're using. So let me just get this out. But maybe what I'll do is I'll give you a few specifications. Uh, I did a bit of research on this when it was offered to me. I compared it against some other chairs that are out there on the market to see, uh, you know, their claims of being lightweight was if it compared, how the poles compared to other ones in its uh, price category as well. And I'll give you all of that as we go along. So we're going to start with the chair. The chair, no poles, and this is just for the chair alone, although really you have to have a set of poles. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but uh, again you're not carrying extra poles just for the chair so it has a weight capacity meaning how much it will support of 265 pounds which is 120 kil kilograms it the chair comes in at 1.4 pounds or 0.64 of a kilogram that's one of its biggest benefits is that this is a very light chair very small very compact once again because some of the poles aren't there right but and that's in fact what it has going for it now it is a high back chair as you saw when i opened up so the only thing you can do is compare it against other high back chairs there are some smaller and lighter chairs out there but they're not this chair right they're not high back they don't support you right up to the top of your head yeah, we, we have to compare one against the other, apples to apples, as they say, against other high back chairs. Now, as far as the dimensions go, I'm gonna wait until it's assembled to give you those things. So there is that, let's talk about the poles. So the poles, as I mentioned, you can purchase separately from Ghetto Gear. They refer to these as the GOAT-6, ultra strong carbon fiber trekking poles. And why they're considered ultra strong is, you can see they're made from carbon fiber, is that the shafts have 50% more carbon fiber. So they're thicker. They're half again as thick as the other carbon fiber trekking poles in this price category that are available on the market today. So a few specifications for these. Max length, 54 inches. Minimum length, 24 inches when totally collapsed. Weight, and this is what most people want to know is what is the weight because the length is pretty much universal on a lot of these. A pair of these poles, one pound, one pound. 0.1 ounces, 486 grams. Um, there are some lighter carbon fiber trekking poles on the market, but again, they're not as strong as these ones. So if you feel that the carbon fiber ones that are out there may not be strong enough for you, then that makes these worth looking at. And these are not much heavier than the other ones. 
and they are right in the same price category for other ones. These are actually stronger, and you'll understand what I mean when I get a little bit further. It does have natural cork grip on it, um, tungsten carbide tip, flip locks, and the flip locks are metal on these, so this has got all the quality components of a good pair of hiking poles. Again, you can purchase these separately, and I'll put the information in the video description to look at if you're interested. Time to put the chair together. All right, let's get started putting the chair together. I'll put the hiking poles aside for a minute, just bring the chair itself out so it comes in its own little stuff sack. You know, this part of it is pretty much like most hiking chairs, that you get the chair components and the frame components separate. And like most of them, they are cord locked together to almost assemble themselves. Now this one is different in that uh, the assembly is different. Now most hiking chairs, at least the ones that I've tested, this main support beam here goes crosswise. So you'd sit in the chair like this. Not so with this chair. The beam, main beam is front to back and it has some unique features that way for doing that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually put the hiking poles into the slots. I'll give you some close-ups again in a minute. but. This is the front of the chair, okay? This is the back of the chair. There are holes in this part of the frame mechanism that allow you to put the hiking poles in. It's designed specifically for hiking poles. Now why the Ghetto Gear wants you to use their hiking pole is because this portion of the shaft is a little bit longer than most of them on the market. And I compared it against the other ones I have at home and that's true. Maybe half an inch, maybe not quite a half inch longer on these ones. But as a result, they go into the receiving holes here on the, the uh, structure of the chair a little bit deeper. So let's start by, well, no, we're gonna do it this way. The chair itself has pockets on the four corners as you would expect. I think it's probably better to demonstrate it this way. Um, this is the top of the chair, the back of the top of the chair. Now I'm gonna take the poles, the hand, the grips, the hand grip area, and I'm gonna slide it into the receiving area of the chair. Make sure it goes on all the way down. Good. I don't know if there's a right way or wrong way. For whatever reason, I have started turning the knob on it, if you will, out, facing outwards. I don't think it really makes a difference. You get into a habit of doing something, and, and that's the way it's, you know, you do it every time. All right, so that is ready to go, as you can see. Now, I'm going to start by, well, we can do this. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So again, this is the back of the chair, and I'm putting the hiking poles into the receiving slots so that they go all the way to the bottom down here. I'll give you some close-ups in a few moments time, right? So they are set into the chair frame. And then of course, like other chairs, last couple you wanna put on here. And here, now here's an advantage I've noticed. It does come with little loops for pulling if you get a lot of tension but you don't. If you do it the way I just did it, you don't get a lot of tension on this because right now it's the poles are still fully collapsed. I haven't extended them. So it's a good idea to put the chair together like this before you extend the poles themselves. So it makes the, this part of the job a lot easier. Now, at this point, to the back, undo the two levers, one on either hiking pole, and start extending them out. You know, I find that you can't go the whole way the first time. It takes two pushes up to get it fully extended. Make sure they're at the same height. They are, and now it's ready though. Now it is nice and ready. Let me just demonstrate sitting in the chair and then we'll bring the camera in for a few close-ups. Oh, do <sighs> you know there is something about having a high back chair. Let me take my hat off. <sighs> yeah. You can't do this with any other chair. Well, other high back chairs you can, of course. But lay your head right back and rest it. And if you're looking for comfort, why not give go the whole way and get something that supports the back of your head as well. Ah, really comfortable chair. The other thing I'm noticing is the clearance under my butt down to that crossbar. Inch and a half. Okay, I'm not a heavy guy. I'm only 185 pounds, but uh, yeah, I've got lots of clearance, lots of support in this. All right, I'm going to reposition so that I can bring the camera in a little closer and give you a close-up on some of the features of this chair. Before I give you the close-up on the chair, I want to share this, and this came out of my research in preparation for this video, and that is 
There are a couple of videos online in reviewing this chair that talk about a fault in its construction or in its design, and that is that the mechanism here on the front of the chair breaks easily. So I was a little bit concerned about that and then I dug a little deeper and what I discovered is, and a couple of videos do address this, is that the chairs that broke, and I'll tell you how they broke in a moment, the chairs that broke were the first ones that hit the market after the Kickstarter was completed. So they were almost, I don't want to call them the pilot chairs or the first run chairs, but they were not up to the standards that Ghetto Gear had expected of this product. So those chairs were returned and the owners were given replacements and they tested them. They actually did follow-up videos uh, testing this out and uh, it doesn't break. Now, how it happened, how they were broken was people of good size, my weight or better, would drop themselves into the chair and rock around a little bit. And I tested this, actually I'll do it for you in a, in a moment, to see if it would break this chair. And what happened is they broke for those people. So it was something about the way this was made, this front portion, this connecting piece right here was made that was weak in its construction. It could have been the materials, I don't know. It could have been the, uh, who knows what it is, but whatever it was that caused it to break has been repaired and there are no reports of any of the current ones breaking. Certainly mine hasn't. And uh, yeah, all right, so let's do a few close-ups. I'll show you how that's the connector piece. You can see that. The rear connector piece where the hiking poles slot in. And yes, you could use other hiking poles, but they recommend using theirs because theirs are specifically designed to match with this chair. All right, not a lot more to see on this, is there? Um, Okay, so I think what I will do though is do exactly what I said, is I'm just gonna set the camera back a little bit, drop into the chair, rock around a little bit in the chair, and just to show that I've been testing it and it hasn't failed for me. All right, let's just drop in. Uh, you know, okay, I didn't really fully drop into the chair, but you know, I, I kind of let my weight drop down on the last couple of inches landing in the chair. Uh, it is comfortable. It really, truly is a comfortable chair. All right, rocking around, moving it from side to side, putting my weight into it. You know, you might be leaning over for your coffee or other beverage or maybe tending the fire, sitting back. Uh, no, I did that. After watching those videos where the, the chairs failed for those people, I said, I got to try that. And uh, it, no failure for me at all. Okay, there are a couple of things that you should be aware of. You probably noticed when I was showing you the chair that the feet on this are just the smaller, rounder feet. They will sink into soft earth and sand. It's not a big foot pad on the bottom of this. So I would really appreciate it if Ghetto Gear would provide as an option for those who want it, some type of a base like the hammock base you see for some of the other larger name chairs that you can slide the feet in with distributed the weight over soft surfaces, specifically sand. Here it's the duff of the forest and occasionally it's really soft. And well, let's see. Yeah, I'm starting to sink in a little bit. Not terribly, but they are starting to sink in just on the duff of the forest here. The other thing I've noticed about it is that it's back heavy. So when I get up out of the chair, uh, it has a tendency to want to fall backwards. And it's just like there's a tipping point, I guess. It's balanced fine enough if it's sitting there, but a little push and the weight of the poles just causes the chair to fall back. That's hardly a deal breaker. It's hardly even worth mentioning other than the fact that it can be a little annoying you get out of the chair and it falls over on you. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so as far as my experiences are, it is a little bit bigger than average than a lot of the other chairs. Definitely taller. I have bigger camp chairs, but not ones I'll take with me hiking. Yeah, it works pretty good. Okay, now I do have a bit more I want to tell you about about this chair, and I'm just going to reposition the camera to do that. All right, all I did is bring the camera a little closer. I just thought, why am I going to get out of this chair to do the next part of this video? Why don't I just stay sitting right in the chair? So here I am, enjoying myself in my chair. Okay, there is a little bit of information I want to share with you. First off, uh, I failed to mention this, and this is really worth noting. This is version 2, or V2, of the Trek chair, and that's to distinguish it from the V1 that had the construction issues and the breakage issues. So this is a different chair in terms of that front hub design. And to back this up, they offering a 30-day return, no hassle return policy if you're not happy with the chair, and a full 
five-year guarantee. So I'd say they're going out of their way to dispel any myths that these chairs break easy. And I have every confidence that this chair is at least as tough as the other chairs that I have tested. Now, here's what I wanted to do. In part of getting ready for this, I put a few notes together on other chairs that are available out there. And first off, um, Again, you have to do apples to apples, so I looked for high back chairs. And Helinox, or Helinox, the, uh, has a chair zero. We all know about the tiny chair zero, which is great if that's what you want to carry. It's for those who really don't want to sit on the ground, but have a chair that's so light you barely notice it. It's tiny, but they also have a high back chair. So they're the Helinox high back chair zero, which sells for $229.95, at least here in Canada. Um, it comes in roughly the same in weight. In fact, it's a little bit heavier. It comes in at one pound, eight ounces, as opposed to one pound, 1.1 ounces. Reason why? The hiking poles, right? So if you take the hiking poles out of this chair, that's where a good chunk of the weight goes. That's why the chair can be as light as it is, is because the hiking poles are forming part of the structure. So I did a little comparison with the for the hiking poles. So the ones that I looked at, the Black Diamond Trail Cork poles, well-known poles, uh, a nice pole, 159.95. They came in at 512 grams, and I don't have a, a, a metric or uh, deer flies, a, a conversion for that. But at 512 grams, this came in at 486 for these poles. So uh, these poles are in fact heavier. I actually actually have a lighter set of poles, also from Black Diamond, known as the Alpine Carbon Carbon Cork trek poles and they come in at 486 grams same weight as these poles do but those poles sell, sell for 235 dollars so yeah did i mention that these poles only sell for 90 i don't think i mentioned that before so that's 90 us so that's a little bit over 100 dollars but certainly half the price of the black diamond alpine carbon quartz track poles for the same weight. I don't have a pair of those to compare them against, so I can't tell you anything in terms of quality control. I can't imagine that they're that much better than these poles because these are great. These are well constructed uh, and stronger. Stronger is one of the things about them because of the extra thick carbon fiber in it. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of information. These prices and weights comparisons, I'll put all the information in the video description so you can go back and take a look at because of course I don't expect you to remember that when I am uh, uh, given to you on the video. Last thing I want to talk about is application. When does this chair make sense and when does it not make sense? And this may be the thing that you really want to consider with this chair. Okay, if you hike regularly with trekking poles and you want a chair to take with you, that's when this one makes sense. If you don't use trekking poles, then there's not a lot of savings in getting these chairs and these trekking poles. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, I'll, I switch back and forth between one of my uh, hiking staffs, my wooden hiking staffs, and trekking poles. And it only made sense, of course, to bring the trekking poles out today. So if you're used to using trekking poles, then it does make sense to buy this chair to go either with the trekking poles you have or upgrade to the trekking poles available from Ghetto Gear. So that's where it makes sense. Now, here's the other thing. There is a real movement in the ultralight outdoor hikers to go to tents that don't have a frame, that they use trekking poles to assemble it. Makes a great idea. There, it's a single wall tent. In other words, there's no separate fly. There's no internal frame. It's not a freestanding tent. It requires trekking poles to assemble the tent. It would have seemed to make some sense if you're carrying trekking poles anyway, why not use those same trekking poles to assemble your tent? Yep, I agree. Doesn't make a lot of sense if you also want to carry this chair. Reason I say that is you can go back and forth. You could have set your tent up, put use these poles with these chairs to set your tent up, and then you take the poles down to use your chair. And then when you want to get back into your tent, you use the poles to set the tent back up again. I don't know, I guess it's doable. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do that. So what I would say is if your tent is a frameless tent, one that requires trekking poles, then this chair is not for you. You're gonna to want to get a chair that's integrated all in one. It doesn't require the use of your trekking poles. However, if you're using a tent that's freestanding, has its own aluminum poles, and you don't need trekking poles to set it up, 
Now we're back to making sense again because again you're saving the weight of the chair by carrying these trekking poles while you hike and then using them to set up your chair when you're at your campsite. All right, I have that out there. I just wanted to help people out so that they understood the pros and cons of where this chair fits in. It is really unique, as I said in the beginning. I haven't seen another chair like this, and it's one of those, why didn't I think of that? Or, wish, or more likely, I wish I had thought of that, because then I'd be the one that has this on the market today. Okay, a bit long-winded. I'll put everything I have in the video description. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.